I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to Tailgate Tales, a special series of the Southern Spirits Podcast. Each week, we're discussing a story involving a school in the Southeastern Conference. So which school are we talking about today, Leah? Drumroll, please. I don't. I didn't hook up the soundboard. <laughs> don't do that. Sorry. We're going to the University of Arkansas. All right. Well, let's meet the University of Arkansas. They go by the Razorbacks. They are 1-3 so far this football season. And this Saturday, September 29th, they play Texas A&M at 11 a.m. That sounds terrible. This will come out just in time for you to listen to it and then watch the game. Because you don't need to be tailgating that early. So. <laughs> Unless you just do it all night, Friday over into it. That sounds so. miserable. Yeah, it really does. Can you tailgate after? Is that a thing? No, not really. You just go home and drink after uh, that. Yeah. Well, let's meet the mascot for Arkansas. Uh, Like I said, they go by the Razorbacks. They have a mascot named Tusk, and it looks like that's both of their mascots. They have a live mascot, which is an actual Russian uh, Razorback hog. Yee, piggy. And they have a costume mascot, and I guess they both go by Tusk. I don't know. I did see that they're on Tusk 4 right now. Oh, well, it's in the thing. I'm sorry. Well, anyway, let's do our let's meet the mascot quote from the Saturday Down South article so that y'all have some background. Arkansas was known as the Cardinals until 1909, a reference to the Cardinal Red the school's teams wear. However, after a win over LSU in 1909, Arkansas coach Huzo Bezdek, <laughs> B-E-Z-D-E-K, let's That's go with Bezdek, said his team played, quote, like a wild band of Razorback hogs, end quote. The following year, the student body voted to adopt the nickname permanently. The school's live mascot, Tusk, made its debut in the 1960s, and the current mascot is Tusk 4, a Russian boar. That's it. Well, okay, question. Go ahead. Why is it that every time we get to talking about how did you get it named, someone's always like, oh, they played like a insert animal here. Well, that's just kind of how a lot of these happened, actually, like... That's how Alabama came to be the Crimson Tide. Don't you know. spoil it for me. A, I still don't know that. Don't do that to well, me. We'll get there in a few weeks. But my point is, like, I have really weird animal references. What if I was back then and being like, oh, damn, they played like a herd of galloping giraffes. And then they would all of a sudden yeah. be like, fuck, yeah, we're the galloping giraffes. Yeah, I'd take it. Like, that's strange. Yeah, you could do that with, like, uh, Troy. Troy could be the galloping giraffes. Nobody would care. Aren't they Trojans, though? Yeah. It makes a little more sense because of the name of the town. Yeah, but they could also be galloping giraffes, you know? But then you've got, like, just the silly mascots. Like, you know, uh, one of the universities in California has, like, banana slugs on campus. So they're the banana slugs. I believe that's UC San Diego. I could be wrong, though. Like, that kind of thing makes sense. Like, if it's indigenous to your place, if it's, uh, like... I mean, yep. even uh, we did Tennessee last week. Like, their coon dog, I get it. It's a hunting kind of environment. Gotcha. Right. But are there razorback hogs in Arkansas? Uh, probably. There are boars. I, I was going to say, I know, know wild hogs are a thing. But, I mean. Yeah. I'm sure there are. I don't know the indigene of, of Arkansas. Is that, the, is that a, that's a word, isn't it? No. Okay, I'm claiming that's a word. <laughs> I don't know the indigene. That's not it at all. And it sounds a little iffy. I don't know the indigene. It sounds like I'm from Arkansas talking about the indigene in Arkansas. That, that's not... Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Have you ever been to Arkansas? No, I haven't. All right, then. Well, that's everything uh, about the mascot and everything, so why don't we get into the story? All right. Well, um, today our story is... Tangentially related to the University of Arkansas. Indigenously related. Calm down. Okay. Um, <laughs> the university or... Uh, I forgot my beer. I'm still <sighs> drinking Monkey Knot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to mention them. Every freaking time. Yeah, I always forget them. I'm sorry. I'm drinking Monkey Knot, but go back to the indigene. <sighs> Stop. Anyway. Um, yeah, so a lot of the Arkansas stories that I found... Uh, were not enough for like a long story Mm -hmm. and like there's a lot of like small hauntings but it's just like a oh yeah like weird shit happens in this location and i wanted like a more story 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 Um, so like i said this one is just bear with me the university is mentioned 
Okay. Okay. Well, um, we are talking about the disappearance of uh, Mary Catherine von Alst uh, out of the Devil's Den State Park. Okay. Is that close to the university? Um, it's in Arkansas. All right. Well, I guess that's what we're doing. I would assume that's like in the same state because, you know. Uh, you would assume that Arkansas is in the same state as Arkansas? Yes. At any rate, let's start. Okay, so this all starts on June the 16th of 1946. And that happened to be uh, Mary Catherine von Alst's parents' 25th wedding anniversary. Now... Happy anniversary. Hey. So they took a road trip. So they lived in Kansas City, and they took a road trip south um going to a relative's house in Fort Smith, Arkansas, so they could have a big party and celebrate and that kind of thing. So the trip was about 300 miles and along the way they came to Devil's Den State Park, which was relatively new at that point in time. Um so this was 1946. The park had just been completed in 1942. So it like I said it's a relatively new attraction. And they were tired, and it was hot as hell, and they were like, you know what, let's stay a night here, take some time, enjoy the park, and then we'll finish the trip in the morning. Excuse me. Well, all of the kids uh, went ahead and went out to the little creek, and there's a big, like, scenic dam out there, and the kids were playing there, and the dad was taking a nap back at the cabin that they had rented, um... I can't figure out where the mom was, but uh, apparently, um, so there was a little girl, Catherine von Alst, uh, and she was playing with her her two brothers at the dam there, and they were splashing in the water, and they were having a good time, and she was like, yeah, fine, whatever. She got bored, Mm -hmm. and she decided, the little girl Mm -hmm. got bored, and she decided, you know what, I'm just going to go back to the cabin because... Ugh, bored you know like <laughs> kids do that yes, um I do so that. <laughs> and so she just took the short walk back to the cabin but it turns out apparently she didn't really know where the cabin was there were 17 cabins in the area and it was they were just sort of dotted here and there throughout the the park oh, and man. she got fucking lost just she walked by one cabin and she realized that wasn't theirs uh so she just kept walking she thought eventually she was going to make it back to the cabin because i mean she walked there from the cabin Mm -hmm. she knew she knew where she was going and oh i didn't mention but she's eight years old so this is a young child that's smart yeah um yeah this is a little (laughs) little kid um and she's barefoot and she's only in a pair of swim trunks so she's not geared up for walking through the woods she literally has a pair of swim trunks on and nothing else well that's upsetting like yeah. maybe a top no nope, nothing a top? okay there are newspaper articles and clippings and nope mm. just a pair of swim trunks um unsettling yeah but i mean she's eight so yeah whatever and so she kept a walk in and she kept a walk in and she passed by a waterfall and she didn't really know you know where she was she didn't recognize the waterfall mm-hmm. and she basically just ended up becoming very disoriented and completely lost she climbed a bluff that was like 600 feet higher than oh, the elevation God. that she was initially on she climbed that she, she went up 600 it. feet barefoot Jesus. in only a pair of swimming trunks and she eventually like the you know the night came and she didn't know what else to do so she just sort of curled up under a tree said her prayers and just went to sleep But it turns out that she woke up the next morning and she couldn't find her way again. She kept walking and kept walking and kept walking. She could hear the the creek below them, but she was too weak at that point to, like, walk back down the bluff. Because she walked the whole day before. Yeah, and and she was surviving on nothing but blackberries that she found in the woods. Mm -hmm. Which, thank God she knew what they were. Mm -hmm. um, Because 
you know, she could have ended up with a berry that was poisonous and killed herself. But she found wild blackberries that she knew what was, and that's what she was surviving on. Well, they were looking for her. They, they dragged the dam thinking she might have drowned. They spread out and did uh, one of those. Uh, so, you know, when they do the grid searches of mm-hmm. the acreage, yeah. um, they didn't think she could have gone very far because there's, there's no reason she would have gone very far. Yeah, you know? and she was a child. She was a little a young kid. child. And it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. She was missing for six days huh. um, until finally... Here comes the University of Arkansas, y'all. Yay! We're incorporating it. There was a student named Porter Chadwick from the University of Arkansas. And he had been in the area hiking and stuff like that. And he joined the search party for her. And he was, you know, he had been hiking, searching for her all day long in the rescue attempt. And he had reached a point of just like, can't do it anymore. I'm very tired. You know, it's time to go back and and we'll do this again in the morning. Excuse me. He decided that he was about to turn back, but he was going to just call out her name one more time. And he yelled her name and she heard him. So she said, hey, you know, like. That's it. Hey. (laughs) No, come on. (laughs) He found her in the mouth of a cave and she was just calm. And she said, yeah, hey, this, I'm you know this is where i live now this is me um (laughs) can you take me back home that kind of thing and she he just described her as being absolutely calm not freaking out not panicking not being upset at all she was just and and really the only like damage done to her was just some mosquito bites that she had on her body because i mean Man. almost naked for six days in mm-hmm. the wilderness you know um in the middle of this well it's the beginning of the summer but you know just she was just chill and mm-hmm. it was freaky and basically he brought her back and and that kind of thing and she just kept saying that her guardian angel was with her the whole time on the mountain mm. and that she had almost no memory left of what had happened. They I don't like, like that at just all. Just almost nothing. She said in later years, like she's been interviewed, she said, I never had nightmares about it. I don't know why. I was never scared. I still can't remember those six days. I don't remember what I did, but I'm alive and that's all that counts. But a little bit of statistics of what it was. As the flow, as the flow cries. As the flow cries. (laughs) As the crow flies, she was only found Uh, about seven miles away from the campsite. Only? Only seven miles. That's a long way. The estimate of how far she traveled, they estimate that she traveled about 26 to 30 miles on foot, barefooted, Mm -hmm. almost naked, through the woods. And she was found at an elevation of over 600 feet higher, or no, excuse me, it was like 800 feet higher than where she started so she's climbed a mountain and (laughs) walked a marathon um and and like i said she doesn't remember any of it and she was perfectly fine a little malnourished and some some bites but like Mm -hmm. not a scratch on her she wasn't hurt she wasn't traumatized she just grew up to be a normal fucking human being Uh, now i don't agree with that it's weird Um, She also said that, um, now, this place is open, tons of hikers, tons of outdoorsmen, there's fishing, there's just all sorts of stuff in this area. She said that she never saw another person. She doesn't remember seeing any animals. She said she thinks she remembers hearing dogs barking, but she never... She doesn't remember anything other than there just being woods Mm -hmm. um, and then being found. So that obviously leads a lot of Reddit conspiracy theorists (laughs) um, to bringing up a lot of interesting theories as to what happened to this little girl. Because it's very implausible that an eight-year-old child could survive that long 
travel that great of a distance, be mm-hmm. found that far away, and not be very injured mm-hmm. or yeah. to the point of starving or dehydration or what you year know. did all this happen? What it happened year? in 1946. Okay, that's June very... the 16th of 1946 is when she went missing. Um, wow. So I'll start with the craziest and go back to the least <laughs> crazy, maybe. If you say so. Okay, a alien abduction. Um, Agree. I mean, she still had all the insect bites. That doesn't make sense, did they? <laughs> you know, like yeah. if she was up in a spaceship, there's probably not going to be any mosquito bites. So mm. my guess is nay on the aliens. Now they also think that she could have you know disappeared with a temporal like a time slip or a dimension slip okay that's crazier than aliens leah (laughs) that is crazier (laughs) it's kind of hard to to gauge craziness you know i don't think so um aliens are plausible time slips not so much eh, depends on what part of physics you're into but (laughs) at any rate they think that it's possible that she doesn't have any memory of it because she her consciousness didn't you know she Mm -hmm. either slipped into another dimension and was just chilling there or like she like time traveled and was just there when she got rescued you know what i mean like one of those things which once again i say bullshit because those mosquito bites (laughs) came from somewhere Um, they're in the time thing and i don't think they're extra dimensional mosquitoes and if there are lord preserve me from ever being there (laughs) because i fucking hate mosquitoes But then the one that's big that has been, like, this story has been in a few different books and stuff like that. Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. Um, They think that she was possibly either abducted by or cared for, you know. Adopted by. Basically adopted by Mm -hmm. uh, a Bigfoot. And, like, that they were sharing food with her and making sure she didn't (laughs) get hurt and, you know, Easily the most plausible. Um, Because she was found at the mouth of a cave, and and maybe that was Bigfoot's cave. Mm -hmm. Um, And they also say that, you know, she kept saying she felt a peace and she wasn't scared because she had her guardian angel with her. She kept mentioning that she had a guardian angel. And they tend to think that that means that there was an entity of some sort with her Mm -hmm. so maybe it was bigfoot or maybe it was a guardian angel i don't i don't know maybe she's just a badass eight-year-old that is probably my personal theory (laughs) um but you've also got to think about um this particular area has also had more than this disappearance so there have been several disappearances out of devil's den state park but the only thing with those is most of the time, from what I've read, the bodies are never found. People just well, go missing. Yeah, it's full on disappearances, though. Yeah. So this one's odd just because of the fact that she showed back up. So, I mean, my guess is it's just a very wooded area and, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, then another theory could be that, like, a person abducted her and, like, was keeping her out somewhere and just decided, eh, fuck it, don't want her anymore. <laughs> or he was asleep in that cave. Or she. Could have been a female abductor. Generally, no, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, they were asleep in that cave and didn't notice that she left. And when they woke up, they were really sad. But anyway, like I said, it's mysterious, it's strange, and a student from the University of Arkansas was the one that found a her hero. and returned her back to her home. So, mm-hmm. you know, University of Arkansas, that's a part of your legacy. You go, Arkansas. You go. Well, there's your Arkansas story that yeah. has nothing to do with Arkansas. Well, some <laughs> well Arkansas is other... not really an interesting campus, is it? I've, like, do they have anything? I have. I mean, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of interesting. Like, um, some of the different sorority and fraternity houses are supposedly haunted. A couple of the different buildings, but like I said, it's not really a big story that I could find. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe there is, and if someone wants to tell me, y'all, story it up. <laughs> I will tell it. But some of the other stories that I found were were true crime stories, and some of that was a little too heavy to be on a tailgate tales. I disagree. We will talk about that later eventually, but some of that stuff was a little too recent to have, you know, just bringing it up for football season. So, Well, um, hell. Like I said, you got uh, the disappearance and miraculous reappearance of Mary Catherine Von Alst. Rescued by an Arkansas student. Huzzah. Well, that was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a fun story. I like survival stories. 
What do you, you think know? happened to her? Well, I think she just hung out in a cave for eight days. Well, she walked a lot, but, you know, she ate a bunch of blackberries. She might have killed a rat or two Ugh. or a squirrel. But would you not be, like, freaking out as a child? Like, Oh, definitely. I wouldn't have made it. For sure I would not have made I it. I just, I don't know what kind of self-possessed child doesn't freak the fuck out when something like that. Like, she was just, they just keep saying in the articles that I read from, like, there's newspaper clippings with pictures of her and all that stuff. And it just kept saying she was just remarkably calm. She wasn't mm-hmm. upset or crying or freaked out or just that's what creeps me out. Because kids, everybody knows kids aren't my favorite. Like, I don't <laughs> dislike children, but like kids don't generally like me. Um, I'm a little creeped out by the little hands. Um <laughs> Same thing with raccoons. Like, it's... I don't know. I think we've had this exact conversation on the show before. Um, so, like I said, just the fact that the child went through this traumatic experience and is just super, like, yeah, no, I'm fine. Like, it, it they got freaks real, me she out She probably got real bit. creepy eyes, too. Yeah, right? it, it creeps me out a little bit, so... Well, good on her for making yeah. it. I, and, like I said, I'm glad that she made it, and I think that's awesome, and woo. Yeah, good work, being a badass kid. Hell Yeah. You know what makes me comfortable? What? Ha- doing a live show at Jasper October 19th. <laughs> so that would help every one of your comfort levels. Come see us at Tallulah Brewing Company. October 19th, that's a Friday. Get a couple of those delicious beers in you and mm-hmm. listen to us be strange. And make sure to listen to the full episode tomorrow. It's um, a really long one. Yeah, it is. But we hope that if you're an Arkansas fan, we hope they win. Uh, they probably won't, though. Hey, <laughs> Arkansas that is, is pretty rude. bad this year. They're pretty bad. That is rude. But Woo pig or hog or suey. I don't know. There's a lot of chance involved that I just don't. Someone from Arkansas, <laughs> tell me how it goes, all right? It's, it's yeah, pigs. That's what it is. <laughs> I, don't think, I really don't think, I don't think that's how that works. That's what it is. But they have like a cheer and they, they, yes, they, they do. P- punch their hands and they wave them around. I don't know. Well, Y'all good luck explain it to, to me. you, Arkansas fans, today. Send me an email. <laughs> we hope you have a fun day. Um, you're up real early for the game, though, so sorry about that. Follow us on all your social medias. Just search for Southern Spirits Podcast. Make sure to uh, join our Patreon, become a part of the Possum Passel, and get some cool swag out of it, including stickers. As soon as we get them. <laughs> yeah, they're still not here yet, but... They have been printed. Yes, they're coming. So look up that on patreon.com slash southernspiritspodcast. Send us an email at southernspiritspodcast at gmail.com. And uh, that's it for week five. So we will see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.